in a way, I, I think we're living in very exciting times. Because I still think that science, if you take it seriously, because it isn't just you, you see, it isn't just your, your um, illusion that is governing science. So, you know, I'm not one of these people that say everything is okay, it's all relativism. It isn't like that. Because knowledge is a, a kind of a partnership between the scientist and nature. And if we get it wrong, nature has a way of coming back and tell us that we're wrong. And this is why we have climate change, global warming, let's call it by, by its real name. And, but it, those of us who take science seriously have already noticed that there is this kind of um, revolution, organic revolution, to oppose the mechanistic is science that we've, that's been dominating us because neo Darwinian science, biology, neo-Darwinian biology, genetic determinism, they really treat organisms as though they were, you know, machines or Lego sets, <laughs> you know, or something like that. And of course, real life isn't like that. And what's so heartening is now across the disciplines the most fundamental quantum physics to the fluid genome, you know, that I was talking about. This is all within the domain of this organic revolution that acknowledges that everything is interconnected with everything else, that acknowledge that um, it, it's, it's, not, it's got nothing to do with control, controller and control, this kind of ideology that, like, you know, like a linear chain of command, you have this boss who tells the manager, who tells the sub-manager, and tells the workers what to do. You know, this, really, this kind of chain of command comes straight out of our, our social institutions, and then it, it's got imported back. But it, it, it is based on um, intercommunication. The, the, the reason our body works so well is because everything is interconnected and everything is intercommunicating. And so it is a very, very different kind of um, knowledge system. It's based on total participation and um, intercommunication. The problem we have is that um, science has been taken over by industry and by, the, by big government and by economics for quite some time now. And it got worse with genetic engineering. And what we've got to do is to reclaim science for public good. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I know that the will is there. We have politicians with us, we have scientists, we have the public with us. And a number of us have launched ourselves as an independent science panel. And we're going to expand that. I am optimistic about the power of the people, of grassroots. And so we work very closely with local communities everywhere. In a perfect world, I think it will be good for scientists to come out of their laboratories and work with people and know what their concerns are and learn to love people as much as they love science. And so this is, I think, we have a community of people who basically love people as well as love their own subject. And, and if we carry on like this, um, we can maybe all together save the world.